Resident Evil 4 Remake is one of those games. One of those games that you play over and over again. For some, the pure mechanical feast that is upon us is good enough reason to play the game two, three, four, maybe even ten times. Thought it was five kills? But definitely killed more than five there. Bro, are you not gonna load your gun and shoot at me? You're just gonna kick me? For others, the in-game challenges incentivize replayability by rewarding the player with CP. Wait, what? But for many, the game's achievement system is the key factor when it comes to how many times they're going to replay the game. With there being 39 total in-game achievements, many of which requiring their own playthroughs, just how long does this take to get? Well, I wanted to be the fastest in the world to complete every achievement in one sitting. And after a few days of routing, practice, and runs, I was able to get every achievement in Resident Evil 4 Remake and the Platinum Trophy in just under 8 hours. Here is how I did it. Of the 39 achievements, 5 of them come from beating the game on different difficulties and with different ranks. One requires completing the game without using the merchant, another one requires beating the game without healing, and one requires beating the game without using any weapons besides the pistol and the knife. Three are given to you by collecting every treasure in the game, one is given to you by S-ranking the entire shooting gallery, and the hardest one is collecting every weapon in the game. One would think that this run would require at least 5 playthroughs, making it nearly impossible to do in such a short period of time. But this is where you would be wrong. These achievements stack, and with some cheeky planning, I was able to fit every achievement in the game into 2.1 playthroughs. The most important thing to understand to being able to recognize how the speedrun works is that the promising agent achievement is unlocked by beating the game on standard or higher difficulty. This means if you beat the game on any difficulty above standard, then this achievement also unlocks. Surprisingly, this property also applies to the Mission Accomplished Dash Plus, Proficient Agent, and S plus rank investigator achievements. These normally require S plus ranks on both standard and hardcore individually. The requirement for S plus being you have to play on a new game and beat the time requirement of five hours. But if you beat the game on professional and don't use bonus weapons while beating the game in less than 15 saves and under five hours, then you can unlock all four of these achievements at once five if you include the achievement for being the game on pro. This consolidates five playthroughs into one. One obviously very difficult playthrough, but for a speedrunner, it should be pretty simple. Getting the S plus on pro alone does not automatically give you those other achievements though. You can S plus pro by beating it in five and a half hours, but that's not good enough. You must also fulfill the requirements of both standard and hardcore S plus to get those achievements too. The problem is that when you start a brand new game with its challenges and Castillans and achievements reset, you don't start with pro unlocked. You have to beat the game first on any difficulty to unlock it. So that's where our second playthrough comes in. During a standard new game pro speedrun, you would normally unlock about 21 achievements. Knife Basics, My Preferred Peace, Nice One Stranger, Talk About a Near-Death Experience, Harpoon Hurler, No Thanks Bro, You Used to Be a Good Guy, Your Small Time, Overkill, Hope You Like Thrill Rides, Smooth Escape, Astute Appraiser, Sprinter, Two Bugs One Stone, Capacity Compliance, Wave Goodbye Right Hand, Peerless Agent, S Plus Rank Investigator, Proficient Agent, Mission Accomplice Dash Plus, and Promising Agent. That just leaves eight more to go, and we have to get those ones in our first playthrough. If we want to squeeze all of the rest of the achievements into that one playthrough though, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. We would have to do Frugalist, beating the game without healing, Silent Stranger, No Merchant, and Minimalist, Pistol and Knife Only, all in one playthrough. By playing on Assisted, we can auto heal when not in combat, making Frugalist a lot easier. This difficulty also has the slowest and weakest enemies and bosses of any difficulty, making it much more possible to beat the game with only the knife and the basic pistol, especially when you're not allowed to upgrade them at the merchant. On top of this, we need to collect every treasure in the game, all the Castillans, do the entire shooting gallery with an S rank, and complete every merchant request. The remaining eight achievements would be mostly miscellaneous tasks so we could fit into the first playthrough, but the final one has a big issue and that is Gun Collector. You have to, in-game, actually purchase every gun in the game at least once. This includes the Infinite Rocket Launcher, Hand Cannon, and Chicago Sweeper. The big problem here is that the Infinite Rocket Launcher is 2 million pesetas, and getting that much money in one playthrough is impossible, so we have to figure out something for that. The actual logistics of doing such a run are also a bit complicated. 
I have full detailed notes for how to do it on my Patreon. But essentially, you can delete your save data to remove any challenges, progress, and repair your Castilians. Then you can use Steam Achievement Manager to remove the achievements from your account. As for the purpose of this video, I want it to be a little different than my normal videos on this channel. It's still going to be highlights and fun times, but I also want you to be able to use this video as a guide for getting basically any achievement in the game. I'm going to show every treasure in the game, every achievement and how I got them and explain the basic route. Let me know how you like this format and if you found it useful. The full run will be in the description as well as my written guide on my Patreon. After a lot of testing and a test playthrough, I was feeling confident and attempted my first run. You might notice that Leon is looking a little different. This is thanks to Amai Pichan, who modeled my original character and mascot into a fully rigged model, and Vanius for porting the model into RE4 Remake. It made this challenge way more fun. So with Soko making her way through the game, I have a huge checklist for all the achievements I'm getting and where I'm going to be getting them, as well as all the locations for treasures and anything I might need to remember. Remember, these notes will be available on my Patreon for as little as $3. I have notes like this for many different runs that I've done on this channel, so if you're interested in learning more, check that out. Each chapter will have a brief splash screen of what is collected and in what order. The first chapter has five treasures, one Castilian and one merchant request for five medallions. After a roundhouse kicking my way to a mostly clean bingo, I collected two treasures and head on my way. So, double blue on the roof. Collecting the three remaining treasures and five medallions in the farm area. Along the route to the end of the chapter, there's a Castilian in the roof of the building on the right. First achievement. I did actually take some damage in the bingo section. Ooh. And because of that frugalist, I wasn't going to be able to heal for the entire run. I figured that that would be fine though, because the system would auto-regenerate HP when not in combat. But it only regenerates from red back to green. So in retrospect, I should have just restarted checkpoint until I did it without taking damage. Chapter 2 has 9 treasures. A Castilla about halfway through and a merchant request to kill 3 rats. I know you can, but I just couldn't find it. Need that? The progress on the achievements. You don't even have to do the whole achievement. Sapphire in the case with the crouch down. There's the sapphire. The Red Mist Village is an absolute breeze, at least on standard, and thank God for that, because I swear I have certified PTSD from this room on Pro. What the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me? I totally forget to do the rats, so I go back to do them when I backtrack to the area while using the small key to unlock the drawer for the mask. Where Jabo? Ah, there we go. This lost me a ton of time, but remembering to actually grab everything was my number one priority. The rest of the chapter is really straightforward as long as I don't forget the Cassian before the chainsaw guy. That one. That one. Ah, <laughs> excuse me. There's the ruby. Chapter three has seven treasures and three sets of merchant requests and no Castillans. We grab this captor's Castilian in chapter 4, because it's faster. The three merchant requests are all pretty easy, selling three snakes, breaking two graves, and shooting five medallions. The first thing we do is do a small sidetrack to get a compass in the locked drawer in the bingo village. Yeah, there's the vintage compass. Then get a snake in the church in a velvet blue. All the blues up here. Then the two graves, and subsequently the snake on the bridge. So you gotta beat the game once first. So you have to do the assisted playthrough first. Do need this. Then in the Gigante room, there is a first medallion followed by a hexagon piece in the merchant room. Now we arrive at the Utter's oil room where we take a very roundabout way of doing it so that we can grab three treasures and all the medallions and at last snake. There's the antique pipe. Yeah, I could kill the log and then come back, but that's kind of slow. I'd rather just do it now. I also got my parry achievement here. I got a parry achievement, nice. Yeah, kinda cool. 
Then I kill Delago before he can die with my sick harpoon skills, getting me harpoon hurler. <laughs> Chapter 4 is the largest chapter in the game and it also has the most stuff to do and collect. There are 10 treasures and 2 merchant requests as well as 2 Castillans in this chapter. The routing is also pretty important to do this chapter quickly. After running past the waifu's worst nightmare, we get to a way shrine key and then get on the boat. Immediately turning left we arrive at the second head cave where we get a velvet blue and the head that we need to beat the chapter. There's the velvet blue. Also, I should note that I am collecting red, green, and yellow herbs, even though I can't use them, because near the end of the run, selling red, green, yellow herbs combined will get me nearly $100,000, saving time when I have to buy the infinite rocket launcher. Then we get back on the boat and head around the corner to the bonus island, where we get two more treasures and head into the lake. Infinite rocket launcher is needed to get all the guns, yes. That's one of the harder parts of the run, is getting that in one playthrough. On the lake, we get to this Lewis Island, where we collect four treasures and a Castillan. If you do everything else before using the key, you can escape easily without the dogs getting to you. First run on professional? No, your first run can't be on professional, because professional not unlocked yet. Skylar. Then I go to the Red Nine Island and grab the two treasures there. Weapons like the Red Nine and the CQBR count as treasures, so they need to be picked up. We also need them for the gun collector achievement. I just send them to storage and make room in my inventory. It's just trying to do them quickly that makes them more difficult. Like, getting all of the weapons in the game is difficult. Then I grab the golden egg from Bach Island and don't forget the velvet blue and grabbing the longer bass. I also go to the first head island and grab the hexagon piece as well as the ruby upstairs. Okay, hexagon piece C. Wow, you can really solve that puzzle in two, two, two moves, that's funny. Grab this. This is where we're gonna turn in our first merchant requests. The astute of you might be aware of a small oversight in this routing. That being, I'm doing every merchant request and also no merchant in the same playthrough. In order to complete the merchant requests, you must talk to the merchant. This obviously invalidates the no merchant achievement. At least you would think so. Except for, we have a little bit of tech that's gonna allow us to do both. This is why I'd like to introduce you to the challenges menu and exactly how it works. Some challenges are achievements, but all achievements are challenges. So while there are 101 challenges in RE4 Remake, there are only 39 achievements, and the achievements are actually triggered by the challenge being completed. So as long as the progress in the challenge menu is tracked, then that counts as progress towards the achievement. This is where saves coming comes into play. When doing an achievement like Silent Stranger or Minimalist, you can make a save with the challenge still valid, then void the challenge and reload the save to make it valid again. In this circumstance, we do it to get the merchant request without having to do a third playthrough. So I can grab each of the merchant requests, save, then turn them in, and the progress is tracked for those merchant requests being turned in even if I don't save and reload to the previous save before I talk to the merchant. Once all 16 challenges are turned in, I can get the achievement, even if on that playthrough I haven't done so by the end. Essentially, this creates two separate timelines, where the game keeps track of both, but doesn't invalidate the long-lasting achievement of that one playthrough. This creates a ton of very interesting routing opportunities, especially since not every challenge works this way. For example, the achievement for collecting every treasure must be done in one playthrough, so you can't save scum the treasures, they must be done legit. Reloading the save reverts your progress on that challenge. So with that done, I can now discard the snakes and the lunker bass that I have turned into the merchant on a previous save, and I got the progress towards the merchant request without actually invalidating my silent stranger achievement. Then I grab the butterfly lamp and fight Gigante. Most of the bosses in early game are pretty straightforward, just unload with the Red 9, because it does a lot more damage than the default pistol. It is actually important to have both on you at all times though, as the improved accuracy on the OG pistol is great for shooting medallions, and switching guns is a lot faster than reloading, especially with them both being unupgraded. I then arrive at chapter 5 at about 42 minutes, and I have to collect 6 treasures and then a Castillan. I also have to kill the Savage Mutt. Triggering the Savage Mutt, grabbing the Castillan and one of the treasures all require you having Ashley, so I can't do Ashley skip here. There is a yellow diamond in the room where you save Ashley from, then after jumping down with her you can grab the elegant mask 
and take a small detour to get another yellow diamond. As all OCs, she's basically just an amalgamation of a bunch of other characters that other people made. With Ashley in this section, it's very likely she gets grabbed. And that's also not actually a big deal. It's a perfect opportunity to get talk about a near-death experience. When passing through the village, it's important that the game drops to like 40 FPS, even though you have a 4080 and a 5900X. As long as there's rain, you will suffer. Backtracking to Mendez's house, you lift Ashley up and grab the Castillan and an old camera. Camera's back here. Where's the Castillan? There he is. Then when returning back to the village, the Savage Mutt will appear. Even unassisted, this dog is an absolute insane amount of HP and will just not die. On my first attempt, I tried to kill him, but died a couple times in the process. Now I'm dead. I should have killed the villagers first! This is so cringe, man. Mostly because the villagers all were popping plagas, making the fight brutally difficult, especially with Ashley being there. On future runs, I would kill the villagers first, then go activate the dog, making this section completely free. After killing the dog, I boost Ashley up to get a treasure and then head into the cabin, grabbing one more treasure on the way. Yeah. I'll get bangle. Cabin is pretty simple in this run. Simply shoot and kick everyone until it ends. Chapter 6 has no merchant requests, but it does have one Cassian and four treasures. The first is inside the Stealth Canyon, and I would suggest stealthing it, as not doing so makes this room much, much harder. Then the side house has the chalice and the Cassian can be seen from here. If I can hit it. Now just the elegant headdress before going into the Bella sister fight. Yeah. Which I do by rushing the Bella on the right who has the crank and just YOLOing the crank door as soon as I can. On assisted, usually the enemies are just AFK, so you can just crank it all the way open and leave without them ever aggroing. And Ashley will just catch up. Then we fight Mendez, and it's time for the comment of the day. This one is from Bill Sales, who says, With the scoping through doors glitch being patched, what are your thoughts on developers patching popular speedrunning strats? Would you prefer that they leave them in or to perfect their game? How do you think this will impact RE4 Remake speedruns going forward? Bill brings up an interesting point about the patches for these glitches. This is actually like a very big topic and an important issue in modern speedrunning. I thought this was so important that I actually made a 30 minute long video on my main channel discussing this topic in depth. If you haven't checked it out, I would definitely recommend it. It covers all of the in-depth detail on why patches like this are detrimental to the speedrunning community and what sort of consequences it could have in the long term. The too long didn't read though was essentially that the devs have every right to do what they do, and I don't think they should pander their game to a really, really small part of the audience such as speedrunners. In fact, devs changing their games for speedrunners often just makes them worse. But these just so happen to also negatively affect the speedrunning community, and that's just an unfortunate side effect. But essentially, to the core speedrunning community, will be unaffected. As most people play on PC, and those who do will just down patch to continue to be able to do the glitches and tricks, just like I have for this speedrun. I will note though that due to the nature of the run itself, there aren't actually many tricks I could pull off without missing an achievement. Mostly all of the tricks are in the second half in the S Plus Pro run, and most of those could be easily routed around, not doing with just a bit of thinking. Thanks so much for the question, I really appreciate it. If you guys have a question or comment that you want me to respond to, make sure to leave it on this video and I'll respond to it in the next. Speaking of normally, I would just skip Mendez, but this part of the run I can't, for twofold reasons. One, I can't use the merchant or that invalidate silent stranger, and two, I actually need to kill Mendez for the achievement. I just stab him a few times after blasting away and he dies pretty quickly. It is assisted after all. Oh, you're not dead. Okay, there you are. I finally grabbed the emerald right at the end before chapter 7, getting the bandit achievement. Chapter 7 is when the castle starts and thus the beginning of a new treasure achievement. There are 7 treasures, a Castilian, and 6 medallions to shoot in this chapter. The first treasure I totally forget because my brain is smoother than the surface of the earth if the earth was the size of a pool ball. Oh, there is a treasure. You're right. I'm trolling. I'll go back. Good shout. It's behind the merchant and easy to miss, so don't forget it. Then in the cannon room, we get the overkill achievement for killing a Ganado with the cannon. This does not invalidate Minimalist, by the way. In fact, you can even shoot the medallions with the cannon, so you don't have to worry about the bloom on your shots making you miss. Can you... Can you do this? <laughs> you can. Sick. All six medallions are in this room, and there's also an elegant bangle. Hello?
medallion. Then, after this, there is a proper entrance to the castle. Here, we kill a few guys and boost Ashley over a wall. There's a treasure around the corner and a ruby on the ceiling. Then we fight the Garador. This is where we get the Never Heard It Coming achievement. By stealth killing the Garador with only the knife, in order to do this, you need to get at least three kitchen knives or two boot knives. By this point, normally my combat knife is broken, so I have to route my knives carefully so I don't miss my chance at this one. It's pretty simple to get. Just stand around and wait for him to AFK and then stab him. Repeat until he's dead. There we go. Right after this, the spinel on the counter is a treasure and the Castillan is in the same room. There's the Castillan. Then when back in the room prior, but on the second floor, swing across the chandelier at the front of the room and then drop down for the last treasure. Okay, gold bangle, gold hourglass, and that's all the treasures for this chapter. There are two other treasures in this room, but we can't get them until much later when we backtrack with the cubic device in chapter 12. Then we just fight through water hall, which sounds easy, but actually without flashes is basically impossible. It's all improv and taking out the archers should be a priority. Leon! No! Once you somehow make it out of there, count your blessings and head into chapter 8. Chapter 8 has one merchant request, one Cassian, and 10 treasures, but we don't get all of them right away. In fact, one of them that we get doesn't even count as a treasure, but it helps with the money route. Right from the get go, we could shoot this bird's nest to get the scratched emerald. That's the merchant request done already. There is a beetle in the fish pond that isn't technically required as a treasure, but helps with the money route. From there, we head to the Gloria Las Blagas room where we use a barrel to kill the red zealot and steal his mirror. After that, we meet Ada and then grab our extravagant cock. Okay, yeah, extravagant clock. There is a small key we grab, and one might think that you would immediately go back to unlock the drawer in the puzzle room, but this is actually slower than doing so in the next chapter, because we have to backtrack with Ashley to get another treasure already. There aren't many skips that can be done in this run due to having to collect all of the treasures, but there is one we could do here. By shooting through the gates sideways like this, you can hit the weights from the wrong side, allowing you to go out and up the left ladder. This lets you climb to the top, collecting the emerald and Castillan without being harassed by the giant throwing his shit at you. You can then progress to the next area from outside and backtrack to grab the elegant necklace. And so like having three extra hotkeys on the left side of your movement keys is like ginormous. At the bottom of the pit here there is a ruby, and then when progressing there is one more treasure that requires a key to get. The beetle. Chapter 9 has a ton of treasures, 12 to be exact, and a huge backtracking section. Not to mention two merchant requests. One to kill three rats, and the other is five medallions. The maze only has one treasure, the elegant chessboard, and then one Castillan. Gaming and poor make and... After clearing the maze, this is where the merchant requests come into play. The first medallion is on the right, near the ceiling. I just can't do that until the end runs over. Followed by the Alexandrite in the hallway. The next few rooms are quite difficult. The goat head room is one of the more difficult rooms because normally you do a skip here, but you can't because you can't throw a flash grenade or a regular grenade. So you just have to run past everyone and assassinate the prime minister of Malaysia. Oh, that's right, I learned my lesson. Shoot him in the face, not the legs. Not the legs, in the face. Now these poor children could finally work again and we could go grab the yellow diamond under the bridge as well as the medallion, then grab the goat head. Yellow diamond under the goat head bridge, small key in the knife drawer. There's a medallion hiding in the chandelier and also one above the knights. But don't forget the small key here. Small key. After killing the knights, there's a cubic key and then two rats in that room. Now that we have these and the small key, we can go backtrack to get that other stuff from the earlier section of the game. It's fastest to do it right now though, so that's when I'm gonna go do it. You run back, then boost up Ashley and grab the last two treasures. Honestly, the first playthrough isn't even that bad. Then once we head back, we get the last of the rats and the medallions. There's one medallion in the dinner room, as well as one rat. The last rat is in chapter 11, after we get to play as Leon and go backtrack into the Ashley section. The final medallion is behind the Chimera statue, and you get it right before you transfer to playing as Ashley. When playing as Ashley, you can skip some of this section, but not all of it. You need to get all three treasures as Ashley and unlock the CQBR for Leon, as that is also a treasure. You cannot go back and grab Ashley's treasures as Leon, so you have to get them now. 
After unlocking the staircase and grabbing the first treasure, you can go downstairs and finish the puzzle. Perfume bottle, there's two left. One's downstairs and one's at the end. Before you go back up, there's the treasure hidden behind this fake wall. Then the last chest is the last key. Lastly, there's a treasure right before you leave Ashley's section around the corner. Chapter 10 is where things get a little bit crazy. There are seven treasures, but you also have to collect the Ashley treasures on the ground as they don't count as collected until you do so. Then there's a Castilian later in the chapter and you have to do one of the more complicated merchant requests. First, we'll talk about the merchant request. Ideally, you will have picked up and saved at least two heavy grenades and a flash. And if not, you can make a detour to the merchant and buy a rocket launcher before doing this. But before you do anything, make at least two backup saves. Then we're gonna go into the Ashley section with Leon and kill our final rat in this first room. Nice. After that, we go downstairs and fight the heavy knight. If we use two heavy grenades and a flash, you can instantly kill the heavy knight. Not gonna RPG him. I don't think it's worth. Um, backtrack to the merchant. Aw, oh, he almost died. Obviously, this invalidates the minimalist challenge, but turning in the request also invalidates the silent stranger one. So we can kill the knight, then turn in the merchant request, then keep the progress for that merchant request and reload the save to before we did this. Thus keeping our progress for the merchant request, but retroactively making our minimalist and silent stranger runs valid. If you're smart, unlike me, you can remember to keep these things you pick up so you don't have to go to the merchant twice. But if you don't, it's no big deal. Just buy a rocket and use that. Now we must go through the backtrack section and actually grab those treasures, the CQBR and the gold links. Now we just do the rest of the level, running past the Nobis and grabbing a few treasures, which would probably end up to be under four and a half hours, which would be like basically impossible. So. The double Garador room is really hard in this setup as well, but I found the best thing to do was shoot the bells and knife them in the back. Complemented with some well-timed pistol shots, it can be not that difficult. Just be careful about the other enemies. They are really the problem here. Also, I swear these fuckers aren't actually blind, they're just pretending. Hello? Do bells exist? Question mark? Now, after I beat them, I can do the only trick in the whole run, and that's the depth Nobi skip. If you are not down patched, you won't be able to do this skip, but that's okay. I think we can all enjoy the camera angle anyways. At least until we realize my OC is too short to get back and bounce the fast way and have to go around. Damn. So go thick. Just before the merchant, there is another treasure and the Castillan. Then we arrive at Verdugo. Verdugo is a tanky boy, and there is absolutely no way we can kill him with these puny pistols. We did the math, and if every single red 9 shot hit while he was frozen, we would still need 300 bullets. Shooting that many times would probably actually take longer than just waiting out the elevator. On the way out, I grabbed the last treasure, the yellow diamond, and thankfully don't die to Verdugo. Oh, that was scary. Chapter 11 doesn't have that much going on. There are two treasures in the TNT room. Maybe it'll be a lot cooler this time around. Are there VA? She did a terrible fucking job. Sounds awful. And you dunk both the Gigantes by stunning them and then, while they're on the grate, pulling the lever. They essentially move in slow motion on this difficulty, so it shouldn't be too hard. Then we ride the minecart and there's an achievement for beating this section without taking any damage. It's exactly the same on every difficulty, so it doesn't really matter when you do this. I'd recommend making a backup save beforehand just in case though, because if you miss both opportunities, then I don't know how you're going to do it again. Just memorizing the enemy spawns and when to lean should make it pretty easy. Although Bloom can really screw you here by just missing the target dead center, <laughs> you know, like 10 times in a row. But the reticle centers pretty fast and the archers shoot really slow. So there isn't much chance that they get you if you just take your time. The first cart ride is pretty free, but the second one could be a little bit tricky for some people. After the first stop, there is a flag inside the building and the Castillan is on the roof. Which is why you never involve companies in anything that you do. The second cart ride is a bit more precise. Most people have a problem with the chainsaw guy. But if you focus on shooting his minecart instead of him, you can break it really early on, making it easy to focus on the archers. 
The minecart way up here at the top can be shot, and it does heavy damage to the Chainsaw Guy's minecart. After getting this achievement, we head into the place where they dug up the bugs. There is one gold bar here. You don't have to get the skulls. It makes it so much more bearable. It actually only takes like 10 minutes. It's pretty easy. And the merchant request. Killing all four Novi's nests. I always forget these exist and have to backtrack to get them. But I kill every Novisador here anyways because they always harass Lewis. So it's just a little bit faster. Now in chapter 12, we have the last bat track and it's a big one. There are nine treasures in one Castilian and the Salazar painting merchant request. In order to do this optimally, we have to do a bit of save scumming. First, save at the merchant before starting the backtrack and make backups. On the way to the merchant request, grab the small key before leaving the merchant. Then right before the painting room, there are three plagas that we can use a flash on to get shield your eyes. There we go. Three kills with the flash. I only figured this out on the second run to do this, so I didn't do it on my first playthrough. Using the eggs we got from Bach Island on chapter four, we desecrate the Salazar painting, completing the merchant request. Um, okay. But now we have to go back to the merchant to turn it in. Throwing the egg ruins the minimalist challenge, but by saves coming, we can avoid that. Unfortunately though, after we load our backup save, we have to go back to that room one more time because we need the other golden egg. It counts as a treasure. Then we go to the room across from here, back to the Novi's room, and get back into chapter 10, where we then ride the gondola all the way back to chapter seven. From here, we use the small key to get the gold bar and the cubic device to unlock the statue. Let's get this one. From here, we go back to chapter 12 and head up the clock tower. Right at the start, there's a gold bar on the left and a Castillan. One second. That's the only damage I took in the whole game. Then halfway up, there's Alexandre on the ceiling and a mirror and an extravagant cock before we go on the lift itself. And like three or four spots where it's just completely RNG if you take damage or not. And then right at the very end, Mundus is completely RNG. It's pretty unlikely they fix it. So it's a really small amount of people that have that issue. The last treasure is after the lift on the broken walkway. And I still PB, like I made a mistake, but like, oh, here we go. Like, you know, maybe I can still do it. But in a no hit run, you're just playing for like an extended period of time. And then all of a sudden, instantly the run's over. The lift itself also has an achievement for beating it without it ever stopping. But I have found that this is nearly impossible with this setup, having only pistols. I actually thought it was a lot easier to do this during the new game pro run, but I made a backup save here just in case I missed both opportunities again. The Salazar boss fight has an achievement that I need to save scum for here. I make a save, then go into the fight and throw a grenade in his mouth, getting the you talk too much achievement. This invalidates minimalists, so I had to reload the save and fight him with only the knife and the pistols. Consistent bunny hops and doom. This fight's actually really hard like this. Even if you have enough handgun ammo, it just takes forever. The best strategy I could find was to down him and then spam the knife stab six times and then do the QTE. Then if you run up fast and spam the knife, you can almost stun lock him into his falls repeatedly. Almost, as when he changes phases, he breaks three, and even before then he could break out of it, but this is my best strat so far. After finally beating him, I limp to the end and arrive at chapter 13. Thank fuck. Jesus. Chapter 13 has nine treasures, a Cassian, and a no merchant requests. Due to the first treasure, you can't do the turret skip. So you just gotta turn them both off manually. Then after this, you go into a small side room and blow up a wall to get the links. Here's the links. After that, a small sidetrack to get the crown and a forklift certified Castillan. Crown. Castillan. Then when you go to locate Ashley, there is a Velvet Blue in the briefcase and before the Oven Man. Uh, okay, Velvet Blue. When switching the power, there is a red barrel on the locked side of the room and a gold bar hiding behind this single mother. The LE5 and the Bioscope both count as treasures, so I collect them both too. That's a bonus shredder, I'm pretty sure. It's not on my list at least, so. Optimally, I keep the LE5 and the scope to use them for some skips later on. You can look through the scope and see which regenerator has the wrench, then use the pistol and knives to kill it. As long as you don't shoot the LE5, it doesn't invalidate Minimalist. Then you save Ashley and end chapter 13. Chapter 14 is a super out of order chapter. 
There are eight treasures, but none of them are in the Wrecking Ball room, meaning you could skip the Wrecking Ball while still going and getting all those treasures. If you aren't down patched, then you'll just have to do this section normally instead. It's probably not even that much slower though, because there's so much backtracking here. The first treasure is the crystal ore in the room you spawn in. Then using the scope to clip to the door and getting Ashley to teleport is the move. I once again collect the Alexandrite on the ceiling, and then there are three merchant requests. There's the Alexandrite. The first one is done here, where I collect five medallions scattered across the outside area. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Then I grab the gold bangle and velvet blue and even the emerald in the sewer. Hot work in the new game pro run. I'm still missing. I could skip the Iron Maiden by timing the door open perfectly and taking the hit. This actually saves so much time, it's insane with this run. Having to fight the Iron Maiden with only a pistol and the knife is so brutal. I just reset the room, honestly, if you don't get it. Ouch. Then I kill four rats in this room and grab the Ornate Necklace. Ornate Necklace. Hello, I can't see anything. Please use your flashlight. Actually. And for the medallion. This is when I backtrack all the way back to the Wrecking Ball skip and start the elevator. Once the elevator started, I'm just waiting for it to arrive. So I grab the merchant request that's right there. This spawns in the super regenerator. Just like the Heavy Knight, we're going to save scum this. I go to make a save and then buy a rocket launcher from the merchant. Then I use it to blast these single moms back to soccer practice. After returning and turning in the merchant request, I reload the save and ride the lift back up. There are two more treasures and one more Castillan. The first treasure is in this room where Ashley is taken from us, and the Castillan is in the second story of the campsite. Just below this is the gold bar. That's the last treasure. Now I must face Krauser, with no health and no weapons. This is getting really fun. Because I can't heal for the Minimalist Challenge and the entire Krauser section is considered combat, if I get hit at all, I'll be limping the entire time. This part was really painful, but I eventually got my way through it. Dude, Bloom is probably the best mechanic to ever exist. Actually. Dude, I fucking... Oh my god. Um... What the fuck? Chapter 15 was going to be hell without healing. There are only four treasures in one Cassian, as well as one merchant request. But the normal room itself, even without these things, is so painful. The first treasure is in the mic room. It's next to the ladder. You can use the turrets, thank god they don't invalidate minimalist. Then the second treasure is on the roof by the bridge where the anti-aircraft gun is. There already is a separate category, it's just... has nothing to do with patch. From here, it's mostly kicking people and praying that you don't get hit by any stray bullets. Limping through this section from hell. I actually make it through somehow, and I get to the Mike death scene. This is where both the treasures are, as well as the five medallions. I got it, I got it, Ray, I got it. Relax. Right above the second treasure is the Castillan. What the? All right, the Castillan's in here. Alongside the treasure. That's the last treasure of the chapter. There's the Castillan, one left. This is now the best part of the run. Not only did we basically do the entire game, but now we also have to do the shooting gallery. There are 12 shooting range courses and you only need to beat one of them to get the first achievement. The second achievement, unfortunately, requires you to S rank all 12. Thankfully, S rank is pretty easy on most of them and does not require a perfect score. You don't need the skulls on any of them, and for some, it's even actually faster to miss the bonus time requirement on purpose to save time. I haven't perfectly routed this out yet, because 
let's be honest, who the fuck wants to do that? But I do know that the only ones I'm for sure that you need the bonus time on are the Punisher ones. There's also an achievement for getting five kills with one bullet, and you can get it here on the last Punisher trial. If you miss your opportunity there, though, you can always get it with the sniper in the last trial. This takes about 15 minutes or so. There are some serious routing changes that can happen if you use the tokens to get some stuff from the shooting gallery and roll certain charms. Particularly the rocket charm saving like 30 minutes if you get it. But I honestly didn't feel like wasting my time to try and get it. Each roll on the gachapon machine takes like 25 seconds, so there's no guarantee that you're going to get what you want, and it could just be a huge time loss. Once out of there, I make it to the war room and save Ashley, and I get to watch The Last of Us Season 5 on Netflix. Now with the final chapter of the game, we have done every merchant request and only have three treasures and one Cassian left. The Velvet Blue on the bridge in Lewis's lab, with all the treasures that should give us the achievement. The Los Illuminados pendant on the altar. Soon, hopefully, a bunch of games will have it. And the gold bar before the merchant. For all treasures. Yep, there it is. This is the part of the run where we make at least five backup saves because this is very important to the run. Once the save is made, we just need to beat the game and grab the last Cassian, and then we're pretty much good to go for the second half of the run. Yes, you heard me. This is only the first half. This is about four and a half hours into this eight hour run. The final boss is actually super painful with the setup we have right now. If he jumps away, there is basically nothing you can do but wait it out. I managed to find a setup for a fast fight, but it's really complicated. Essentially, you could stun lock the boss in place for like two, sometimes three cycles, but it takes four to kill him. So once he jumps away, you can break his eyes in preparation for him to land near you. Then once he does, you stun lock him to death. Easier said than done though. Dude, that's so unlucky, dude. Oh my god. From there, you just wait for the rocket, and shooting it does not invalidate any achievements. Finally, we get one last forklift certified Castillan and ride the jet ski to safety. It's pretty easy to no damage the jet ski section. If you just follow a video of someone doing it, you can just replicate that and it'll work perfectly. For the escape. Finishing this run will give you the Raider achievement as well as Revolution Windup. Sprinter, Frugalist, Minimalist, Silent Stranger, Your Small Time, No Thanks Bro, and Unlock the Pro difficulty. For me, this is done with only minor practice in about 5 hours, but my second time around, I finished nearly 20 minutes faster. Now we reload a save and farm a few achievements. In order to buy the Infinite Rocket Launcher, you need 2 million dollars. Without the bonus treasure from the DLC, you only get about 1,600,000 after selling everything you can and collect it throughout the run and combining all of your treasures optimally. To make up for this 400,000 detriment, we need to cheese with a small oversight in the market. No, this is not a crypto advertisement, but yes, it will destroy the economy. If you somehow get the rocket charm, it would save like 20% off the rocket launcher. Saving 20% of 2 million is 400,000 exactly, and that's exactly how much we miss it by. This could actually skip this entire backtrack section, and you know, you don't have to beat the game twice. In retrospect, even if it takes like 10 minutes, I should try every attempt I can to get this time save. But in case you don't get it like me, the run's not over. You can sell everything, this includes the Scratched Emerald, giving you all Merchant Requests achievement, and then fill your inventory with First Aid Sprays. The First Aid Sprays are bought for 3,000 each, and can be bought in an unlimited amount of times on Assisted. You can then store these First Aid Sprays in your typewriter. The items in the typewriter are stored into New Game Plus, and when you do New Game Plus, you can select the professional difficulty. First Aid Sprays sell for 5000 on Pro, making it give you a free $2,000 every First Aid Spray. By storing 175 First Aid Sprays, you can make $400,000 for free by reselling them on Pro. This is a bit extra than the 400000 we need. This is so we can use a rocket launcher to kill Sadler at the end here. Once you finish the game again, you can make a save, and that's where we start the New Game Pro run. With the first run finished, we now have 29 out of 39 achievements completed. By doing a new game pro speedrun and getting an S+, plus, we can then get another 5 instantly. And with the other 5, we're going to be getting them in the way of the speedrun, or just afterwards in new game plus. I'm not going to bother explaining the whole new game pro speedrun, but I will link to my speedrun explain video for the category itself in the description. There are some small adaptations that were made on that new game pro speedrun for this run, however. We make a safety save before the elevator to be extra careful to be able to kill everyone before it stops. Pulling the lever at the bottom and then jumping on the lift immediately kills the red zealot below, making it easier for us to get the capacity compliance achievement. On island, we make sure to get two plagas with a single bullet while killing the regenerator with the wrench to get two bugs, one stone. 
And besides that, it was basically just a normal New Game Pro run without being able to save as much as we'd like to. I chose to save at Chapter 4, right before Gigante, right before Cabin, right before Bella Sisters, right before the Waterhall, right before the Maze, right before Novies, right before Verdugo, right before the Elevator, right at the start of Chapter 13, midway through Krauser's fight, start of Chapter 15, before War Room. As of writing this, I've only finished one All Achievements run. I have done more than that many attempts, but on my second attempt, I lost all 30 minutes of my lead of the first run by dying many, many times in Waterhall in the New Game Pro run. So I rage quit. Yep. The hardest part by far is the New Game Pro run, but once it's over, the run is basically done. You get those five achievements I mentioned earlier, leaving only two achievements left. Beating Pro with S Plus unlocks the Hand Cannon and the Chicago Sweeper. Once I buy those from the CP menu, I go to New Game Plus and play through the first house. Then I go backwards and find this stealthy merchant you probably didn't know existed. Here I sell my stored first aids and get two million dollars. Then I buy the infinite rocket launcher and sell it immediately. Two mil, infinite rocket. You only have to have it in your inventory for a brief time for it to count for gun collector. Using the leftover money, I buy all of the guns that I needed to buy that I hadn't bought yet, giving me the gun collector. There we go. Now there's one last achievement. I just need to exclusively max out one of my guns. I just pick a random gun and exclusive that out because I have tons of money. And that is all achievements in under eight hours. Or it would be if I hadn't forgotten to kill three enemies with a flash and had to panic to find some enemies quickly. Uh, thankfully my chapter 14 save had a flash and there are three crows outside. I almost missed my sub eight. Let's go, sub eight! <laughs> Let's go! Overall, this run is really cool. It's got so many moving parts and pieces that are fun to route out. And I'm sure there are countless reroutes that could save the run even more time and consistency. This run really shows you the whole game and everything it has to offer. I honestly thought the first of the two runs would be really easy. And for the most part, I was correct. But some of the late game boss fights are genuinely very difficult when you can't heal and have shit weapons. The downside to this run is that the end game, the final two hours of this seven to eight hour speedrun, is a new game pro speedrun. While that sounds cool, New Game Pro is the most random speedrun category, and with the save restrictions in place for S+, consistently getting a good run is near impossible as of right now with current strats. Many, many runs will be lost in this category near the end, to getting absolutely boned to RNG, or even failing due to fatigue. Hours into this brutally long run, doing a New Game Pro run is just painful. It's really fun though, and I really want to get sub 7 hours, so I'll be doing more runs live on my Twitch. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see the full run, check out the description of this video. And if you like this style of video for all achievements, let me know. I'm hoping people can use it to get their own achievements, while also using it to document my routing for this unique speedrun category. The advanced notes for the speedrun and everything I did will be available on my Patreon. Support me there if you want to. Thanks so much for those who do. Thanks for watching, and stay stylish.